Good morning. Uh, thanks for coming. We just want to understand a little bit about um, the audience. So that, you know, when we do this rest of the event, we try to focus on what you really want uh, from this. So let us do a very quick show of hands up. How many people have already worked with Big Data in some way or the other? Okay, awesome. Good, good, really good strength. How many of you have heard or kind of know, like me, maybe read, but not actually work with Big Data? Okay, why are we doing this session again? I don't understand. Maybe we should start with the panel right now. Uh, so, what we thought is um, just to bring everybody to in, in, you know, a common page, uh, I have a bunch of like 42 slides. So, which means I'll just flash them very, very quickly and maybe ask questions in the audience. We just want to get to vocabulary. When you try to look at the industry, there are several ways of looking at it. Uh, one of the interests that I have is if you take a certain industry, first of all, is it hype or is it reality? Uh, second thing is that what are the opportunities? And as startups, uh, you know, in the ecosystem of startups that we have, and as a kind of a perennial startup, uh, even though my company is 10 years old, I still consider myself a startup. Uh, always interesting finding out what are the new opportunities. How is this going to change things? What is going to happen? What are the applications? Who are the players in this? And all those kinds of things. So this is this is this is an attempt. This at least this overview is is an attempt to run through that. So let me. Uh, Occasionally, if something shows up that says uh, virus and all that, just ignore it because <laughs> I just acquired it this morning. I was at a different event yesterday and I gave them my pen drive, and you know what happens. Um, so, I think the first ever uh, exposure I had uh, for big data was when I saw on InfoQ uh, a bunch of Facebook engineers talking about how they are handling petabytes of data and every day they get terabytes of data across Then That actually terrified me. I just looked at it and said, wow, that part of information. And uh, that was a pretty uh, good uh, good discussion. These guys were talking about what are the challenges, how much of stuff they have to do, real time and all that sort of stuff. And then obviously no uh, topic or no talk about big data is complete without some mention of Hadoop, uh, which seems to be at the core of most of the processing of big data. So that is that's one of those things. And then what do you do with all this data? You want to analyze it in some way and then you know visualize it in some way. So all big data discussions also you know pull along with these topics like analytics, um, you know. Then I'll skip through the rest of it because there is this interesting mix between some the, the term called data science or data scientists. People either love it or hate it. And a lot of people say that's all bullshit. There is no data scientist. And there are also other kinds of things that say, you know, uh, data science is an emerging thing that we need to pay attention to it. Why can't we teach data science like computer science? Because lots of decisions are going to be made with data. So there is a whole bunch of uh, evolution of things. And when you go from very structured relational database world to slightly unstructured or semi-structured data and completely unstructured document data, you need new technologies to handle them. Key value pairs, no SQL databases, in-memory databases, they're all part of the picture. So we'll start with what is it? Why does it come from? You know, how do we process it? You know, what do we do with it? You know, we process it. What, what do we take the results and do what? Who are the players? Um, and what are the opportunities? <coughs> so we none of this will be complete because things are changing. The interesting thing is, if you go Google Big Data, the result itself is big data, right? Because you're going to get large, large amounts of information. And then they said, how are you going to figure out what, is, what makes sense and what doesn't? So let's look at what is it. Uh, like a term cloud, it's a bit nebulous. When cloud started, everything can be cloud, right? You know, you can keep on preparing this. There's a private cloud, there's a public cloud, there's a hybrid cloud, there's a data cloud, and maybe you can attach cloud as a prefix or suffix to anything you want, kind of thing. Cloud computing, you know, that kind of stuff. So big data has suffers a little bit similar thing. So I said, somebody will be making trying to make sense out of all these confusing terms. So let's see what, what it is that they do. 
Of course, he always go to the big guys who do research reports and sell it to a lot of companies and make a lot of money. And Gartner says big data is being three dimensional. Okay? Increasing volume, amount of data. Increasing velocity, the speed at which the data arrives. Think tweets, for example, uh, when some disaster happens, uh, and very range of times. This seems to be a consistent, and I was pretty happy. Okay, finally, we'll nail it down. It is three E's. Volume, velocity, and variety. Sounds really good. It's like, you know, hotels, some five, some forces, and that kind of stuff. And then we said, hey, this is cool. And then suddenly, recently, I was, I continued Googling, and I found another article that says, it is six weeks. And they added something else like viscosity and something else. I said, okay, I'm not going to do Right now, let me deal with these three weeks. And, um, okay, uh, we already talked about that. So, where does it come from? It depends, right? It depends on what you're talking about. Uh, if you're an enterprise, it comes, and if you want, it comes out of every key click every customer makes on your website, right? Uh, you want to find out what they're looking at, why they're looking at certain things, why are they staying on certain pages. This is all web analytics area. But you can get, you know, hot spots. Basically, a lot of information you can get. It can come from financial transactions. And, you know, we have uh, Nigel from PayPal who's going to tell us, and how do you know when a transaction happens that, that it's not a fraudulent transaction? It is what, and that they can't wait, put it in a batch and wait and come back and tell you later kind of stuff. All the credit card companies. They've been doing a lot of this thing earlier. But how do they do it now? What how do they manage this? What happens when micro payments take off? Mobile payments take off, and the amount of data that you go to gather is just phenomenal. Okay, some of this is transaction data. And of course, all of us, as part of Facebook and Twitter, we generate our own data. In fact, there's one guy who's annoyingly tweeting all the time with the hashtag big data saying, and every day I'm generating big data. Okay, what he means is he's tweeting. I said, okay boss, you said it once, now so why do you want to say it? You go search for it. You find like 10 of those things. And every day he gets up and me and says, okay, we are generating social media. So these are all basically the drivers with which it starts. But these are the sources. Okay. Before I jump off into this, please don't think that all these are my original thoughts. Okay, I copied every slide has been copied from either a book or an article, and there may be a few slides here and there that are my own, which I'm probably more likely to be questions. Okay, and I have a list of all these resources uh, somewhere, and I have a link to that resource also. So I'll give you that. It's a bundle on Bitly. So we talked about chatter from social networks, web service logs. That is one data. Traffic flow sensors. Think, see what happens when we have this Internet of Things happen. Internet of Things is where with IPv6, every little device can be addressable. And they all, as if our social chat is not enough, they are going to start chatting too. So maybe a small sensor in some, uh, you know, uh, garden will say, "Hey, I, my plant needs water," kind of stuff. So we're going to get, we're going to get a lot of these uh, large amounts of information, and that is going to come. Um, then, you know, satellite imagery is something that's, you know, we know every little bit of information that comes from there. So we'll go through this. Uh, scans of government documents, GPS trails, Foursquare and others, you know, telemetry from automobile, financial, I and mean, just bits and pieces of, and think about, look at each one of them, no two are exactly the same. Everything is different. And, that we, and, it, and not all of them are structured, right? So there are some pictures here. I don't even know how to pronounce that thing. Okay. Alright. Then check put upside down and things. So um, look look at these volumes. You know, um, 25 quintillion bytes. What does it mean? Right? In the last two years, I mean, this is the emerging. So when you start thinking about, is this like a hype? Is it, is there something real going on? Some of these numbers, right? Not that we don't take these numbers and really take it because from the time the numbers are printed to now, these numbers might have changed. But they're just one mile post. Okay. And this is the where you can became a generated. You may ask, hey, I'm a startup. Why should I care? We'll come to that at some point there. But look at it, blogs. And these are all like millions of posts a day. Or hundreds of posts, or thousands of posts, or hundreds of thousands. 
and you know I don't expect you to kind of stand through all this and we will not cover that. But I'll be happy to hand over all these slides along with the links from where they came from. Okay. So how do we process this? This this is taken from um, one of the nice things is O'Reilly, uh, a company in the US that publishes lots of books, also runs some interesting conferences. One of the big conferences is called Strata, and they talk about data. And O'Reilly, to some extent, focuses a lot on the government data and raw data sets and stuff like that. And uh, they have three or four really good books on the data. And we can, at some point, I mean, Google and then find a list. But essentially, this is the processing pattern, and there will be variations of this, and I'll show you some others. Uh, the essential thing is, one is collect the data, there is a big process of cleaning the data, because not all the data that you get is clean. Let me give you an example. A uh, couple of years ago at NASCAR product conclave, Guy Kawasaki came and gave an opening keynote, and he became an instant hit. Everybody loved him. Then he did a some Twitter event and even more famous. Then he went and ate masala dosa somewhere and said, I ate masala dosa. He tweeted. Guess how many retweets? I was in the train trying to get the train back from Bangalore to Chennai and I was going through my Twitter stream and I subscribed unfortunately to uh, anything NASCOM BC and they already had it packed NASCOM product country. There are 200 to 300 retweets of Guy Kawasaki eating masala dosa. Everybody was thrilled about it. So, you know, and th there is a similar work they did, some data partners that happened recently saying that if you, um, uh, if you, I, I think I'll have to get that tweet properly, but you know, the essence is that if you uh, give somebody how to work, some job on, you know, Hadoop, they can they learn to work, work, but if you train them deeply in Hadoop, they leave the company for a better job. And that was one tweet from one of the data companies. That's again everybody took pleasure in retweeting it. The reason I'm saying is the reason we want to remote is take the data, there's a basic piece of data, right, which is maybe interesting. Then the other piece of data that are basically augmenting it are not directly data itself, it's maybe the number of times retweeted is a useful count, it's kind of metadata, and maybe the popularity and the way the information propagates, they're all different kinds of things. So this data has to be cleaned because we want to keep the base data only once, and then you want to go through. And there are other ways of training too in some of the projects that, for example, myself and Chandu both run. People are talking about billions of transactions from large companies where the company name may be spent in five different ways. And you want to take it and then you want to standardize it and stuff like that. So, training is one part. Then you process it. And then depending on your needs, you know, it's real time or even they can do it in batch or you know, what kind of information that you want to derive from it, uh, you can do a lot of things. Okay. I don't know anything about how internally Amazon processes the information, so I'm going to later maybe get some help. But just let us theoretically say that we have a huge retail store like Amazon, there are orders flowing in. When the orders flow into the pipeline, you want to tap that information for a variety of reasons. You want to tap it for actually shipping the orders back. But you also want to tap it to why are these people buying books? Can I add it to the profile? Does it make a difference to the person's profile? Can I update the profile? And as soon as they place the order or when they are going and even viewing the page, Amazon shows us three other uh, three other uh, things, right? Yeah, Amazon shows, okay, you can, people who bought this book or bought this uh, cell phone or bought this device also bought these kinds of things. That data is coming in. Now you are entering it and pulling it out. So just think about a simple information stream where you can tap off and you know filter it and get large amounts of information out of it and then directly updating a whole bunch of things. Some in real time, some not in real time. So processing pipelines is one thing that we'll keep, you know, we'll talk about a little bit more. So here is a bunch of key you know, words that, you know, if you are in the space, you probably know this just for the sake of, you know, establishing it and putting it there. Hadoop is a distributed processing framework. It seems to be the most popular uh, tool today that we have. And there are a couple of others that are coming up uh, that may be interesting to look at. Uh, you, you can't talk about Hadoop alone because the map reduce is the algorithm that Google used to take. It's basically a very simple way to take work, partition it, distribute it, process it, merge it back, and provide the results. And uh, Google did it for you know essentially for Google search, 
they talked about it, wrote a white paper, and then a bunch of guys from Yahoo started, and then they started uh, you know, publishing information about this and created an open source project with Apache. And, and then, of course, there are a bunch of companies making tons of money out of it. Cloudera is one example. Uh, they give you commercial implementations, and uh, they also support and provide services for that. Okay? So, there are a series of these, and I don't think I need to get into this. So, once you have big data, you need analysis platforms, right? You need a higher level language for analysis, you know, the conventional programming languages versus, you know, some level of data handling or data languages. Uh, machine learning is something that is becoming very popular. You can use a lot of data as learning data. From there, you can observe patterns, and then you can have, uh, you know, machine learning being unlocked things run on it, and then you can build a variety of applications. Each one of these topics by itself can fill a couple of sessions in conferences, right? And there are companies that I know even uh, here in Chennai using uh, some of these tools. In fact, uh, you know, uh, there's a company called Rails Factory that you know doing something with Kamal. So Hadoop is, you know, again related, right? Data warehouse software on top of Hadoop. So you can see this ecosystem. When you see Hadoop, you see all these other things that go in and around Hadoop uh, that let you build uh, applications. So we, some of these we will be able to cover during uh, the panel. Okay. So if you think about an unstructured database. Um, one of the things interesting things in is I uh, keep going back to Twitter mostly because we, we are familiar and it's a common denominator example. In Twitter, we have tweets which are basic units of information. Then we have connections. People are connected, this person is connected to this person. Then we have a retweet patterns. Somebody propagates. When somebody retweets another person, it also not only means that they they are following this person, but they also like this particular topic. So indirectly, you can say that if I'm retweeting a lot about startups from Vijayanand Streets, it means that I am also interested in uh, you know, startups, for example. So I think uh, there are levels of metadata that you can glean from the basic data. Okay, you can you can bring out all those kinds of things, and then you can look at it. Uh, so this, if you look at it, the social graph, like the one that Facebook has, or the one that you can construct are all interrelated graph databases, right? That's a slightly different way of processing data, data and then, you know, uh, taking it and, you know, working with it. Uh, so, when you, we are talking about really big data, how do you get the data in and out of the system? So, you need a set of tools for doing that too, right? Uh, you know, if I'm talking about gigabytes, petabytes of data, or, you know, large amounts of data, you know, in the case of Facebook, you know, users generate the data and they, they gather it. But if you are an enterprise and you want to take all your existing data that's in several silos, you want to bring it in and then you want to create uh, some kind of, you know, internal data cloud. And, you know, you need tools for doing that too. Okay. Um, with this, I think we'll stop. It's a lot of log data. In fact, some of the very interesting companies in the big data space are log analysis companies. Like Splunk is one which went public and uh, got some hundred million dollars or something like that. And you can see their ads everywhere because I think it's been, they're spending a lot of their money uh, because everywhere I see, I, I see in, an ad from uh, Splunk, you know, this is a, there used to be a company that used to do a lot of uh, logs. So big data in Hadoop is more like a, a you know, a batch oriented processing, you know, kind of semi batch oriented processing. But you put it in data, you process it, you get back, there is a kind of uh, you know batch nature to it. So there is a bunch of other projects that are coming up, which are slightly uh, real time. Um, there is one from Yahoo called S4. I don't know how popular it is. Nor is the next one from Twitter called Twitter Storm. They said they release it in July. I don't know. Is anybody using Twitter Storm or playing around with it here in the audience? You do it. Oh, playing around. Good. Okay. So it works. There is basically something that there is a deliverable that you can get. Work for that. Okay, so let us look at the trends. That is as tech as I can get. Uh, fortunately, we have panelists, we are all practitioners, so in the next session we will get you know, a little bit deeper. But let us look at what is happening in this space. This is actually the answer to the question, is this hype? So um, a little bit step back to somewhere around 1998, and I came across this thing called XML and I got very excited and said, oh, is this like a, 
is this a hype or is it reality? So how do you verify this hype or reality? So first thing you do is you don't necessarily listen to the analysts, right? The analysts have their own reasons for saying something is going to be taken small enough. You watch all the big companies who are well established to see whether they are doing anything with it. And so for my simplest metric at the time was was Oracle doing something with it? Was Microsoft doing something with it? Was Google doing something with it? Was, you know, um, all the big companies. And who are these? Who are IBM, for example? Who are all these committees? What are they contributing? You know, where? In what directions are they pulling the standards? To, uh, so that's one thing we look at. So this is the funding stuff. Like Cloudera is a company. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, core committers of Hadoop, I think, went and initially joined, and I think later we left. Uh, Cloudera, I know because uh, you know. A uh, relative of mine works in the US and he recently you know, used to be in California, moved to New York and they have people uh, working for Cloudera out of Chennai. We're trying to get that guy here but you know, pretty. Um, but essentially what is happening is Cloudera is, if you know how to, and uh, you know, Krishna, I will ask you to talk about it in the panel. If you put Hadoop in your resume and upload it to Monster, you will find some very interesting patterns. There's a large demand for people. I believe in Bangalore, I think last year or something like that, they had a pack, uh, conference on Hadoop. They tried, uh, they estimated about 300 people initially, 600 people showed up. They could admit 400, and they had to, I think, 400 plus the rest of them, they couldn't admit. So there's a large amount of demand. Cloudera is, is basically a Hadoop company, but they're also building a lot of things around Hadoop. Okay. Mapbox is a competition to Cloudera. They raised about 25 million dollars. Uh, MongoDB um, is a no-SQL database. Uh, the, you know that company raised some money. Data Stacks, you know, it's an Apache Cassandra. You know, that's another no-SQL database. And Splunk, uh, you know, Splunk actually has around about 100 billion, 230 billion to the IP. This is one of the earliest data companies um, to go cloud public and get this. So I was saying, so I wanted to make my book very simple. So I went and typing a lot of queries and saying, you know the marketplace where what is the landscape big data we can't really go through all of these details but if you really look at it there is technology i have some you know some questions and maybe i don't fully agree with this or the next slide that i'm going to show you but you get a sense of this you know apache has base you know hadoop map cassandra some of them are products some of them are you know technologies or concepts and then this is the full stack right Oh, as it stands, I think this came from Forbes, and then somebody looked at it and they said, "No, it's not complete." So let's get it. This is one of those what is called the audience killer slides. Nobody will be squinting and nobody can see anything in there. So don't worry about it. I'll give you a copy but, uh, or a link. This guy, but I, you know, there are some areas where there is a lot of questions are: should it belong here? Should it belong here? But what I'm trying to show you is. Infrastructure, just look at the headings. Infrastructure, analytics, applications, cross infrastructure, analytics, wow. data sources, these are all the large groupings. So now you can go and big data and put one of these suffixes, you can get a lot of these companies. When I was doing a top companies in cloud computing, sometime I got like 250 companies in some direction. I said, what the heck are 250 companies doing in the cloud space? When I can think of infrastructure, some tools for building something, and some applications kind of stuff. So there is a there's a lot that goes on. So when you are looking for emerging opportunities, you want to actually look at some of these guys, pick some area and go deeper and figure out what are they doing. Uh, there'll be a time check. If somebody can stop me, we'll exit the time. You know? Okay. So it's always whenever you look at technologies, you also want to see who is doing it, who is using it, what sectors of the industry are using it. Healthcare is one. Government seems to be a really, really obviously they they collect tons of data. Uh, you, I, I'm not mentioning any of the intelligence communities here, but assume that they are even looking at every one of the conversations and stuff like that. We take manufacturing because they they need to get a lot of information. Um, personal location data we already know that, okay, and finance which we'll be talking about in the panel. Okay. It is cloud. How many of you know what cloud is? Okay, good. Um, so you're not being infected. <laughs> so cloud is this uh, application. It's uh, kind of an interesting application. 
there are two. One is called PL index, another is called cloud. You can it's spelled as C A K L O U D. You can go and give it your Twitter handle, your Facebook handle. It gathers all your activity, so you're giving it permission to take your data. It gives you, it takes all of it, and then somehow computes your uh, influence. Okay, uh, don't take it too seriously because if you're tweeting regularly and for four days you stop your cloud score, you go this and you're in depression. It happened to me a couple of times. So, but it also does some very interesting things. It mines all the topics you know, from your tweets and Facebook posts and says, "Hey, you are an authority in this topic. Guess what?" I tweeted only once about China, and then China became one of my areas of speciality. So I don't take that seriously anymore. But it is kind of interesting. The top three or four, they got five. You know, because I talk a lot about startups. I talk talk a lot about technology. Uh, you know, about innovation and some social media stuff. So they came up. So what they have to do is they have to take all this data that is there is being tweeted, all the data that is coming from Facebook posts. And probably eliminate the duplicate because uh, my Twitter is connected to Facebook, so anything I do on Twitter appears on Facebook. So they have probably cleaned this up, uh, you know, analyzed it. It's a great analysis application. If you go to cloud, type in the name of any person that you know, uh, some Twitter handle or something like that. You see the influence, the reach a person has. For example, if a person has a reach of 5k, that means you post a Twitter post, it, it can potentially reach 5k people. Whether they read it or not, it is um, So, cloud, cloud is one of the users. And this is the level of processing data for you to get a sense of it. Social network process every day. So, they not only do Facebook and Twitter, they do a whole bunch of things Google Plus and all that. Okay, number of index users. We look at the rows of data and cloud data warehouse. Right? That is big to me. Whatever, however you define big data, it's, it's fairly big. Um, PayPal, somewhere I just went and tracked and I found this nice picture, so I thought, you know, let's put it up here. It's a logical architecture, uh, how they use Hadoop, and I won't even attempt to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to leave it to Namjot to do it next time. There are some proprietary, sorry. Well, it is. I got it on the internet, open web. <laughs> so. Let's see five minutes. Five minutes, okay, I'm back. So, so market and market segments. There is a slide. Since we have only five minutes, I'm not going to talk about this. Um, forecast. If you believe in forecast, it's good to take a look at them just to get a sense of what uh, what they are. So, there is one forecast that says by 2017, you know, it is 53.4 billion dollars or whatever. And then there is another forecast that will go to 86 billion by 2020. Okay. And these are all like various companies and what is their current contribution. Okay. This is kind of an interesting slide. I don't care about hardware. So software services, this is the correct. So maybe a great entry point in the big data is to some services, become an expert in some specific area which is popular. And you can find that out. The way you find that out is I'll show you another slide later. So this is this simply act from a book by Ed uh, yeah, on big data predictions uh, chapter. Okay, you will see more explicit tools of analysis. We'll actually talk about some of these things in the panel. Arise in the marketplaces. There is this company called Infotunes. If you want, if you don't do any kind of search on Twitter data, you will not get more than three days of data. If you want larger. You need to write your own programs to take them and accumulate them, which is what I do. There's a little script, you know, Python program I found on GitHub and called Backup My Tweets. Uh, if you want, I'll tell you where it is. And is BMTU.py, and I just go and say, I want Benjamin's tweets. Anything that he ever tweeted, I want it in the database. I can just go and type Vijay, and then it will take it and stick it in the database. Um, and then you can run it in batch mode every three days, and then it will take all the latest tweets and keep sticking it. So you can build your own little repository. But in you can go and ask because they take they source it from Twitter. You can actually go and say, I want Twitter data on big data or on market. Any particular information. They have an API. You can actually build applications using that. So you will see these and Infochips was listed and I think Microsoft is starting a marketplace chip. Okay. I'm not going to even do that. Uh, so this is another slide on the skills gap. 
what are the areas in which there are a lot of skills? Because obviously, many of these are analysis skills. But I'm very interested in this data hacking thing. So I'm glad that you guys have a hacker, hackathon or, you know, what is it called? Hack9. Why is it only hack9? Oh, yes. Okay, right. Hack9. So more concentration, you don't get distracted with that. Okay. So I always believe in actually going and looking for jobs as a leading indicator for any technology. So Indeed.com is one of my favorite because they are a job aggregator with 3,000 different job boards and companies and stuff like that. And then you can go and do these searches called relative searches and absolute searches. You, I went and typed big data. I wanted to the title. Any job that is titled big data I want to see, how is it going? I was just interested in the trend, not in the absolute numbers that I want to type. And it will be interesting to keep on seeing these trends to see where it goes. And to me, that is a leading indicator. I think there are about 4,000 jobs. And there are other ways to analyze the data. If you can, you can create an RSS speed out of it, and then you can start tracking it, and you can see how long a certain job stays without being filled. That will give you an idea about how much of scarcity of talent is there. So that is that's one of the Okay? Uh, I promise you something. Uh, while I was doing this research and happily copying, copying, pasting all these products, I also went and put all the URLs because I said I, it's a good to have one step where I acknowledge all the sources. And uh, this is a bitly bundle. Bitly is a URL shortener. I use it everywhere for my tweets and all that sort of stuff. So there is a bundle on big data, data resources, big data, data science, analysis, visualization. And its URL is bitly.com bundle. Don't expect it. I'll get some traffic, but I won't get any, it won't make my clouds go off. So that is the end of my talk. Uh, one or two questions. Yeah, a few questions. Uh, nothing deep technical, I may have to ask you know, others here. Uh, but let's just break one or two of my talk and just take some questions. Yeah. Uh, my, my name is Karthik. Yeah, my name is Karthik. Um, we talk about uh, three Vs and velocity, and uh, volume. Uh, Assume uh, the variant comes in where uh, there is no structure to the data. But assume there is a structure, like say credential transaction, like paper, we talk about credit card information. I think more, there is some structure to all the credit card information. In that case, does it mandate to use uh, GoSQL as a database or even uh, these frameworks work on relational databases? I think there are connectors to relational databases. I think, uh, I think what is happening is that you the very fact that these are all mixed up means that you can't really say that I'm going to go only with this kind of stuff. So because you have some structure, when when you see a payment transaction, assuming it to be unstructured, though I doubt, I think it's probably semi-structured or actually structured. But for validating uh, the transaction, there are a bunch of lookups I may want to do, that data may be sitting in structured data. So there is, I've seen ODBC and JDBC connectors to all these SQLs, uh, you know, no SQL database. How, which one will you choose? Depends on the actual volume of data and where you project it to go, and there are some advantages and some disadvantages. The advantage is, see, the way I look at it and with my limited knowledge is that I look at NoSQL as a very fast way of writing things. Whereas in relation databases, because of all these indexes, when you stick something in there, just update a whole bunch of all these new plus trees and that takes time. Now, there's an answer. Just to add to that, right? So, we had to split up uh, sort of the transactional part of that, of say, a semi-structured payment request, right? So you have things like credit card. From the actual analytics part, right? So anything that is, say, fraud or risk-related gets split off from the real-time transaction itself. So they, they work on two different data sets. Uh, they, the one part being analytic, we can, we're actually working on that part to move uh, the sort of data sources from traditional IDBMS to something as well as performance, validating things like data grids and also, in some cases, covenant data sources. Uh, but yes, the, the way to do it is to actually split up between the actual LTP and the whole app type of use cases and an application. So you don't try to mix it up later. Hi, I'm Chandu Nair. Um, but the question I have is, what are the data and the, the, the maps that you get, particularly in India, particularly among the tech-oriented community, is very largely US-centric. 
Uh, but there's a lot of things happening outside of the US. You know? uh, like in Europe, the trends seem to be kind of different. And so do in the UK. Any uh, indications of what are the differences across geographies? So there are a few slides I kind of took off. Uh, when I started looking at it, the little I have seen is mostly from the uh, government data. There's huge initiatives in both in Europe. For example, in Australia, you know, um, then of course in the US and California, healthcare data kind of stuff. There seems to be a lot of large initiatives because they seem to be, they require a large infrastructure and they, they're all coming out with the open data movement. So there is a related movement called linked open data and there's a whole book, class of interesting technologies. They use a lot of these big data tools to process them. Uh, there's a lot of open data that everybody, in fact, the US is mandated uh, to publish a lot of information. I think that's true with India too, though I have no idea whether they have an API, how much of it is available, uh, all that. Europe, there is a lot, lot of it. UK is leading the way. They are not only doing this, they are also building a semantic layer on top of the data. So you get a lot of uh, data in, in fact, If you look at the trillion uh, triples challenges and all those kinds of things, and a lot of data is coming from the UK. Uh, and, uh, you know, Europe, I think there are four major initiatives. That is again centered around the limit of the data.